on this episode of China Uncensored, Chinese propaganda. Now as American as apple pie. Hi, welcome to China Uncensored. I'm your host, Chris Chappell. Chinese propaganda, it's not just for Chinese people anymore. The Chinese Communist Party's official perspective on China has infiltrated nearly every American home, almost every major English language newspaper, TV network, and radio station. And it happened so quietly, so gradually, that almost no one saw it coming. Like the aliens, they've been here all along. <clears throat> In 2013, Chinese leader Xi Jinping gave a speech at, and this is what it's really called, China's National Meeting on Propaganda and Thought Work. Thought Work? Okay, come on now. It's like you're not even trying to hide it. I believe the next meeting she went to was the National Meeting on the same thing we do every meeting, Pinky. Try to take over the world. Anyway, at the Thought Work meeting, she said China needs to strengthen media coverage and promote China's views internationally. The Chinese Communist Party now spends $10 billion a year to spread its propaganda overseas. And it has three goals, according to independent watchdog Freedom House. One, to promote a positive view of China and benign perspective of the CCP's authoritarian regime. Two, to encourage foreign investment in China and openness to Chinese investment abroad. And three, to marginalize, demonize, or entirely suppress anti-CCP voices. In other words, the CCP's goals are to, one, paint a giant rainbow, two, get foreigners to seek the pot of gold, and three, suppress any rainbow experts who point out the rainbow is fake. So there are some obvious Chinese propaganda methods and some very sneaky, subtle ones. The obvious, an ad for state-run Xinhua News in the middle of Times Square. A waste of money for sure. Who cares about Xinhua? I was looking at the ad for whatever she's doing. Then there's the English China Daily in newspaper boxes all over major US cities. But would you pay 25 cents to read about how every country loves China? And of course, English state-run television. It used to be called CCTV America. But in 2016, they rebranded it as China Global Television Network, or CGTN. But you can still tell what it is by all their stupid panda coverage. I think it's pretty clear now why pandas are endangered. But it's not just pandas. Let's take a look at how CGTN covers Tibetan Buddhism. The 11th Panchen Lama is the spiritual leader of Buddhism in China's Tibet region. As China is celebrating the 20th anniversary of his enthronement, he has talked about some of the changes he wants to make. Hmm, I wonder what those changes could be. Core values of socialism, such as harmony, honesty, and equality, have their corresponding contents in Sutra. Panchen of past generation have been known for patriotism. Wow, communism is just like Buddhism. And to be a good religious leader, you have to be loyal to the Communist Party. Thanks, Panchen Lama, and thanks, CGTN America, for not mentioning how this Panchen Lama's enthronement came after the Communist Party kidnapped the actual Panchen Lama and then replaced him with this kid, who they then spent 20 years brainwashing. Did you know CGTN is available in a quarter of American households? Now, there's also that sneaky, subtle kind of propaganda I mentioned. It's a strategy the CCP calls borrowing the boat to reach the sea. In other words, putting state-sponsored propaganda into Western media outlets in a way that makes it feel like it's part of those outlets' normal content. For example, these paid advertising supplements are designed to look and feel just like articles and then slipped into major U.S. papers like the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal. Not subtle enough? How about how every day state-run media provides TV footage from China for free through its news feed and through services like Reuters so that American media outlets can pick it up? For example, this NBC News video shows footage of flooding in China. And what do you know? Part of it is identical to the state-run CCTV feed. You can usually tell because state-run media reports on China's natural disasters focus heavily on how great the rescue efforts are. It sends the subtle message that the CCP is here to help. For a lot of China-related TV news stories in the U.S., most of the footage and information comes from Chinese state-run media. 
And there's Radio 2. This Reuters investigation showed that programming from state-run China Radio International was being broadcast on radio stations in 15 American cities because many stations were willing to allow part ownership by Chinese companies to make financial ends meet. So the state-run propaganda mostly covers the first and second goals listed by Freedom House. But what about the third goal? You see, propaganda alone isn't enough to control the China narrative. Because what about all those pesky foreign journalists? That's where censorship comes in. There's a lot of obvious stuff, like when government thugs stop media from reporting on something specific. But more damaging is the self-censorship, like how journalists based in China avoid reporting on certain sensitive topics for fear they could get kicked out of China altogether especially after the CCP made an example out of Al Jazeera's Melissa Chan. And of course, sometimes editors are told to kill a story to protect their company. Yar, dead articles tell no tales, but they boost sales. Which I believe is the sixth movie in the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise. So, the CCP is spending $10 billion a year on propaganda, as well as implementing widespread censorship pressure. Why is this a big deal? Because it's severely misleading U.S. companies, government officials, and average Americans when it comes to making decisions on China. The CCP says its economy is strong, so U.S. companies go there, but often lose money. The CCP boasts about its high-speed rail, so U.S. government officials think, hey, it would be a great idea to have the Chinese government invest in high-speed rail projects in America. Even though China sentenced their former railways minister to death after a kind of catastrophic high-speed rail crash that they may have tried to cover up. But one thing the CCP for sure covered up was food safety hazards, which then literally killed puppies. So yeah, not good. But is there anything the U.S. government can do about the spread of Chinese state-run propaganda in America? Well, the first thing they can do is watch the situation closely. Last year, Congress passed a bipartisan law that would help the State Department to work with experts to closely monitor propaganda and disinformation from the Chinese Communist Party. They can also demand more transparency. The FCC could implement rules that require clear labeling of foreign government ownership of media outlets or of paid content sponsored by foreign governments. And they should review potential acquisitions of U.S. media companies by Chinese state-run or affiliated companies. The Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States should have the power to stop these deals if necessary. So, as we wait for the quick, decisive action of the U.S. government, is there anything you can do in the meantime? Well, keep your eyes peeled for whether what you're watching or reading is coming from Chinese state-run media, brands like these. And maybe take those views with a teeny, tiny grain of salt. And when you're reading or watching news in American mainstream media that have bureaus in China, keep in mind that even though their reports might be factually correct, there's a lot of important stories they're not covering. And of course, you should take a look at alternative sources of information as well. Like, I don't know, maybe a subversive comedy news program that uncensors China-related news. So what do you think of Chinese propaganda infiltrating American hearts and minds? Leave your comments below. Thanks for watching this episode of China Uncensored. Once again, I'm your host, Chris Chappell. See you next time.